It all started when Japan wanted to expand their land. The U.S. didn't want any part of that, so they stopped helping Japan. The U.S. was helping Japan to get supplies, which included a major resource known as oil. Japan needed oil to expand, and the Philippines contained a large amount of oil. There was only one problem. The U.S. occupied the Philippines. Japan then planned an attack on Pearl Harbor to cripple the U.S.'s closest naval base. This would make it easier to take over the Philippines. Because of World War II, we were eventually split into capitalists and communists. This started the Cold War. This is a major effect because it broke ties between the U.S. and the Soviet Union and brought about the construction of the Berlin Wall. Nuclear warfare is another major effect that happened because of World War II. It showed up around the world after the U.S. bombed Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Everyone started making nuclear weapons because they didn't want to be left behind and defenseless. Hideki Tojo planned the attack on Pearl Harbor. While President Roosevelt tried to fight back, the United States did not succeed. This bombing on Pearl Harbor brought the United States instantly into World War II. The bombing at Hiroshima and Nagasaki ended the war for the United States and Japan because of the amount of innocent citizens that were killed. Do you have any nicknames people would call you? Well, uh, instead of Robert, I'd rather be called Bob. Bob? Yeah. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What did you enjoy during your childhood? Getting into trouble. No. A troublemaker. I enjoyed almost anything. Uh, as a child, playing with other kids. Well, when I was in grade school, I used to uh, flirt with the girls. <laughs> no, uh, just played as young kids would, you know, uh, played in the school grounds, played uh, baseball, played on our bikes, uh, took girls for rides on our bikes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in high school, I was in the a cappella choir, in the chorus, the orchestra, the band, <laughs> played the clarinet. Had a good time through high school. Did you have any favorite classes in high school? Uh, lunch. It's always good. <laughs> well, I, I, would, I, I would have seen the best class was gym. <laughs> I wanted to. I, I wanted to get in with another fellow, and I were going to join the Navy together, which we did. And then as we attempted to, when we got through our physicals, he did not pass his physical, so I ended up going in alone. But it was a very good experience in my life. It, uh, it, it helps one to grow up. Philippines. I went to radio school. I was a, a radio operator in the service. Very interesting. Very interesting. I met my cousin in the Philippines. He was a busy maintenance and uh, I went over to the Philippines and I found out where he was stationed there and I got in my 
Jeep and they drove over to where he lives. Caught him underneath a car working on a car. And I kicked his feet while he was out of the car and he kind of spied him out and looked up and said, ah, wow. So we hit it off real well. We would play cards. So together I'd drive out there almost every day. in the Philippines? No, a year, a little over a year was spent in the Philippines, the rest of it in the United States. Doing the radio? Yeah. Join the Navy to see the sea. And what did I see? I saw the girls. I was very happy to be in the military and uh, in a group where formed a chorus and we entertained the troops over there. Uh, that was always a good time. Always made me feel good to be able to get up and sing and make the rest of the guys happy. Bob was an intelligent radio broadcaster during World War II. Due to his hard work, he was able to spread the word on major events going on during that time. He reported major things happening such as Pearl Harbor, Victory in Japan Day, the Six Day War, and many more events. Thanks to him, people were able to be on date with everything going on. Discharged. I went right to work. Found myself a job and worked for the same company for 48 years. And where was, what was this company? Uh, H.C. Miller Company. We manufactured blue sleeve ring binders. Did you get married? Oh, yeah. Was it during the, this your service? Or after, after the service. Do you have any kids? Yes. Three. Three kids. A boy and two girls. What were their names? What were their names? Mm -hmm. Scott is a boy. Uh, Cindy and Lynn. Do you still like to sing today? Oh yes, I do a lot of singing. Matter of fact, we got a concert coming up here. Uh, we will be performing. I have a solo that I'm going to sing, and uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Several activities they have available for people. One of them is uh, bowling on the Wii, they call it. <laughs> uh, have you ever done that? Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Well, that's what, uh, that's what I like to do on Wednesdays. Wednesdays at 3 o'clock and Thursday at 1.15. And uh, we bowl three games. Uh, that I like more than that. Did you used to bowl when you were younger? Oh yeah. There was more hand-to-hand -hand combat during the time that I was in than now. They're much more educated in the way of in the way of war. You don't like yeah. to put it that way, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's different now than it was then. From all of us to you, thank you, Bob, for your commitment to serving our country and protecting our family. Thanks to you and all the other veterans that sacrificed and risked their lives for us, we are now a better country. If it weren't for you and your generation, along with everything you guys did, we wouldn't be what we are today. 
Thanks.